What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to today's Saturday episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On last night's episode after the game, I got to vent, we got some stuff off, and, uh, you know, it's really disappointing where we are with this Bulls team. So because of that, we will be having a, a live stream crisis hotline today where Bulls fans can call in, air their grievances, vent some feelings, all that good stuff. It's already posted as far as, like, it's scheduled. So go and click the reminder on there if you want to join for the live call-in show this afternoon. But with all that being said, today's episode, this is a Saturday's episode, so you know it's mainly built around voicemail. Now, we only got two voicemails today. We'll also be breaking down some of the, the post-game press conferences from Zach and Billy Donovan, as well as some other things. We'll get into that all right after our intro. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So here we are yet again with more bullshit ass play from the Chicago Bulls. And I'm sorry, I know every I know there are some people that really don't like when I use profanity on the show. But you know what? I got to be me. And this the effort that we've seen from this team is piss poor. It's disrespectful. It's disrespectful to the fans. It's disrespectful to the players. It's disrespectful to the franchise. This is terrible. What we've been seeing from this team is not good. This is not a playoff team. Uh, t- style that we're seeing. This is no heart from this team that we're seeing. And it's really just, it's it's so much going on. You have your people that blame it just on Billy Donovan. You have your people that blame it just on uh, players like Vooch or just on Levine or just on DeMar. It's a combination of a lot of different things going on out there for the Chicago Bulls. But this effort is disrespectful and it's not becoming of this team. We've gotten several quotes from Zach Levine and we'll get into some stuff from him. But I want to start it off again with the head coach and Billy Donovan. And we're going to play a little bit of his press conference here. To be quite honest with you, I didn't do a good enough job of, of creating maybe enough clarity for them on those situations. And I thought we had some blown coverages and um, we got hurt on some slip outs. Um, it was stuff that we knew that they were going to do. Uh, we kind of talked about it, worked on it a little bit, but I obviously did not do a good enough job creating enough clarity there for them. So that's on me. Uh, I thought we got some of it corrected better in the second half. I think it's things we're going to need going forward, and we got to be better at that. Um, but that was, I thought, some of the issues. Uh, the other issues where we turned the ball to too much, they got way out in transition. You know, on us, I thought that really hurt us. We have too much lack of communication. I think guys get very, very introspective and thinking about what they've got to do instead of figuring out what we have to do to solve it. I think we've got to get better with our communication. It almost sounds like you'd prefer more, quote unquote, finger pointing, like directness in terms of how guys are communicating. Is that, is that what you're saying? But no, versus just not communicating not, enough? No, I'm not, I'm not saying like direct, but like there's screening actions happening. Things are happening. Things are going on in the game very, very quickly screaming to a guy, yelling to a guy, communicating to a guy to give him a heads up of what's happening or what he's getting ready to do. All right. So, you know, the one thing that I've said, and I, and I had a, a video that did pretty big when I talked about, I'm tired of hearing the lip service from Billy Donovan. I get it. It does need to be identified. One of the callers goes into some things with Billy Donovan as well. So I'll break it down a little bit more there. But at the end of the day, regardless of what's being said or what's not, it's not, it's not being done out there on the court. I don't know if they're tuning out Billy Donovan. I won't necessarily say that that's true. I won't say that it's not true either. Um, but at the end of the day, for some, for the, the coach, Billy Donovan has been good at, quote unquote, identifying what this team needs for months now. This whole time we've been going through any type of, de- he's, he's identified it. But we haven't really seen it turn around on the basketball court. And that's what's most concerning. Because if you can identify something, it'll be one thing if they didn't identify, if they didn't say what was going on, if they didn't say what needed to be done to change things. But the fact that nothing is being done is like, it's mind boggling. It really is mind boggling. It's, it's, it's like you have the answers to the test, but you still fail it somehow. How the hell is this happening? How are professional basketball players that are getting paid millions of dollars, the coach is getting paid millions of dollars, being embarrassed this much during a five-game homestand. Five ga- uh, four out of those five, lo- losing four in a row. This is embarrassing. Embarrassing. And for the fans that have supported this team, f- for the fans that even when the national media was throwing hate towards the Bulls, that we defended this team. And God knows some of you guys were going in on some of the national media people. Rightfully so at that time. To give this type of effort consistently is disrespectful to us. 
And when you look at the fan base, even Zach Levine, like this, this game started off with Zach Levine saying they wanted to thank the fans. This is how you thank the fans? This is how you thank them. It's, it's crazy. It's wild. It's, it's, I don't I really have no words. But I also wanted to play some from Zach Levine's conference here. I mean, they just jumped on us. It's, you know, we're singing the same story. And, you know, I'm, I always try to be very uh, uplifting and, and try to see the bright side. But I'm just – I'm tired of talking. Um, you know, we, we say a lot of words and, you know, we say the right things. But we got to figure it out. Um, and we're not doing that plain and simple. You know, everybody, top to bottom, coach, staff, everybody's involved. And we just got to do a better job because it's right around the corner. We can't let this happen. It's embarrassing. One thing, and the reason why I wanted to end it on that one is Zach Levine saying he's tired of the talk as well. I'm glad that somebody's saying it because, yeah, we're tired of it too. The, the, the proof is in the pudding. I always like to say the proof is in the pudding. You, Everything that you see, show and prove. And this team, what they're showing and proving right now is that they are not ready. That they aren't ready. They, they don't deserve our faith. That what hap- what's going to happen in this offseason is going to be ugly. Postseason, I should say, not offseason. I said on the live stream last night that AK and Eversley, what this did, right? And I know for the Bulls fans that are saying, well, see why the Bulls should have made a trade? And no, it was always it was always the smart move to wait till the offseason to make a trade because you have more assets that way. AK and Eversley can get creative with expiring contracts, all that. It was never the smart move, the intelligent move to make a knee-jerk reaction, especially without getting to see the team fully healthy. But what, what we've seen now since the All-Star break is, is I'm, I, I am willing to bet my home on. A.K. and Eversley, if now they, they, they have a lot, and they're going to use this to say, hey, listen, we got to make some serious changes with some things. I, and I said on the live stream, and not that, not, it didn't seem like that many people were against it. Um, Zach, a, Zach is coming back. Let's be clear. They're not going to let Zach walk. It's going to be too difficult to try to sign and trade him. Zach Levine's going to be here in the Chicago Bulls uniform. But best believe, almost everybody else is movable. And I'm not saying they're going to be looking to trade everybody on the team, but best believe they're going to be looking for deals that will improve this team. And nobody, nobody, I don't think except Patrick Williams, and not even I, keep, keep him, I know people aren't going to like that either. Again, I'm not saying they're going to be looking to trade IO, but if the perfect deal comes along, I don't think this team is going to is 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 this front office is going to hesitate at all, considering what we've seen down the stretch of this game. Now, one one thing that can be said as well, and one thing that I've always said is that this team is going to drastically improve the bench. And that may still be the thing. A.K. and Eversley may very well say, hey, listen, yes, rather than move one of our starters or something like that, let's just improve on. Let's look at improving the bench with more veterans, more consistent players, players that we can trust. And then we'll try to see what we can do. Give it to the trade deadline. If that, if we're still not at the place that we want to be by the trade deadline, all right, maybe we look at moving tomorrow. Maybe we look at moving Vooch. Maybe we look at moving some other pieces. But I don't, I don't know if they're going to move some of the bigger pieces right away unless it's the perfect deal. But they're drastically going to improve the bench, and it needs to be done. It needs to happen. This is. I don't know if I've ever seen quite a fall off in the way that I've seen it. And if you look all through, and, and, and everybody's gone through all the stages of grief with this team. It was happiness. It was anger. It was sadness. And really, when you look at it now, when you look at even some of the national media, uh, Bulls beat writers, not the national media, because fuck them. Uh, some of the people that specifically cover this team, it's gone from anger and outrage to just grief. Like, it's really grief in a, min- in a lot of different ways. And that is the issue. Now, Saturday episodes, built around your voicemails. We have two voicemails we're going to get into. This first one is from Shay. What's up, man? This is Shay. You know, I've been thinking, we talk about Nikola Vucevic not being aggressive on the offensive end, but when you look at it, Billy Donovan has never known to put the big man in the best position when it comes to scoring. I was looking at some old Oklahoma City Thunder tapes, and he never really put Steven Adams in the best position when he came to the offensive end. To be honest, he didn't really use Steven Adams in the playoffs that well. Now, look, I'm not making any excuses. Probably Vucevic does have to be a little bit more aggressive, but when it comes down to it, I have to blame Billy for not putting, putting Vucevic in the best possible position, you know what I'm saying? I think his offense is more perimeter-based instead of 
the interior base, and I think that he might need to change that when the playoffs come, depending on who we're facing. Anyway, tell me what you think. Peace. All right, Shay. Um, Shay, for those who don't know, Shay's been a very vocal person supporting Nikola Vucevic. And while I have fought against a lot of Vooch, still ranks pretty high in his in his uh, position uh, statistically. But you can't blame this all on Billy Donovan. You can't. Billy, it's Steven Adams and, and Nikola Vucevic are two vastly different centers. I wish Nikola Vucevic had the toughness that Steven Adams had with his skills that he'd be probably the best center in the NBA, second, third, third, fourth. He'd be one of the best centers in the NBA if he had the toughness of Steven Adams. But he doesn't. But they, 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 Stephen Adams is the exact type of player you don't have to run offense for. Now, they're doing a little bit more for him down in Memphis, but you don't have to. So making that comparison, Shay, I don't really see it and I don't agree with it. Um, and I can't, I can't say, listen, yes, there, are there times where Billy Donovan should go to Vooch in the post more? Absolutely. Have there been times where Vooch has been playing well and they seem to go away from Vooch and they should be going to him more? Yes. But Vooch just not being in the position? No. Vooch settles for bad shots. There's time where Vooch has Mitch matches on him that he does not take take advantage of there have been times where where smaller players have stripped the ball away from him rather than him take it to them hard and go to the rim it's not just all on billy donovan is it some of the coaching absolutely absolutely it is but we can't blame it all on that because a lot of it a lot of it is nikola vucevic not seemingly being aggressive enough with the with the in the times that he has mismatches on on smaller players in the time where even the team does go to him and he and he can't seem to hit some of the bunnies. There are absolutely times of it. Like I've said with so much, and I try to be even kill and, and honest about, the problem isn't just one thing. You can't just blame it on Billy Donovan. You can't just blame it on Vooch. Vooch not being used to his optimal or not playing to his optimal is a combination of both the coaching staff and Nikola Vucevic and the players not going to him in, in some of the times where they need to go to him. It's a combination of it all. And that's just being honest and real. Things need to change with this team drastically. It's not going to happen. I, I, at this point, I, I'd be crazy to, to bet or think it's going to happen by the playoffs. Could it? Yes. Do I hope it does? Absolutely, I hope it does. Absolutely. I absolutely hope it does. Is it likely, though? No, it's not. We'll see. We'll see. It all remains to be seen. Let's get into this next one. This one is from Colin Ferguson, who I believe this is his first time leaving a voicemail. Let's go ahead and get into this one now. This is Colin Ferguson. <clears throat> Thank you for this opportunity. I believe the issues with the Bulls <clears throat> relates to the coaching. Uh, there's some things that I was very disappointed at press conference. We pretty much um, unveiled and um, threw the guys underneath the bus. Granted, those things he spoke of are very true. For instance, offensive rebounding, I do not understand why these guys, when a shot is taken, they retreat backwards, do not attack the boards where other teams are doing it to us. Trenton Thompson and Patrick Williams sometimes do it. Um, defensive rotation, um, very poor. These teams often uh, find uh, open layups against us. Energy level, that's players and coaching. That's unacceptable. Blame things on, on Vucevic, um, that's not wise because this gentleman is a tremendous positive piece for the Bulls. They just use him incorrectly. Get him inside, run the offense through him at times. And then in terms of Del Rosen, there are times that you watch other teams, what they do to create screens for their players to get an open shot, where in Del Rosen's case, we're watching him dribble the ball to a spot, which is great, but you got to mix that up. Transition break, I don't understand why the team do not understand how much better they are when they're getting out into the break in a transition of game as opposed to walking it up. Part of their walk-up is the Del Rosen factor in the fact that players feel they need to slow it up, get the ball in his hand. They need to alter that. Um, type of offense that Billy Donovan runs, which is historic, uh, is a problem. It is not making use of the team's best uh, assets. That's my um, my take, and I'm very very concerned with the press conference yesterday. I can reach can be reached. I don't know if I'm supposed to leave my number, but um, this is Colin Ferguson, and um, I just hope they make some changes here. All right. So Colin talks about a culture thing, right? And you know the thing with this is that I think early in the season we all talked about how the Bulls' culture was changing for the positive. The fact of winning, and I think sometimes we identify culture too much with whether teams win or lose. 
right? But the the body language of these players, the heart that, that we're seeing, that absolutely is a culture thing. It's a toughness thing as well. Now, one thing that I don't agree with in what she said here is he talked about how um, – the, were they attacking players? I, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. Um, but I don't think that it's that. I don't think that it's that it's that. Like, you need to call out players when they do bullshit. So I don't think we can't, A, say that our, ourselves talk about things players are not doing, but then when the coach talks about it publicly, say he's throwing them under the bus. That's not throwing players under the bus. That is holding them accountable. And again, this isn't to Colin. This is to, to, to just generalities of it. You, we have to stop this piss poor ass soft. Now that's a bad coach. This soft ass culture thing. And when you, when you talk about players publicly, when you call out the bullshit that they're doing, it's oh we're throwing people under the bus. It's only throwing somebody under the bus if they tell you something in confidence, and then you then you release it. Or if you have a, a hand in something too, and you just blame it all on one party. When you talk about shit that everybody can see that watches this game, and the players playing piss poor and not giving the proper effort, that's not that's not throwing people under the bus to me. To me, that is talking honestly about the bullshit that some of these players are doing. So, no, I can't get with the fact that it's throwing players under the bus. Now, the culture thing, I can absolutely get with. There are some things and a toughness that we need on this team that a lot of championship teams have that we don't. A lot of playoff teams have that we don't. We don't have a true play style. Like, when you look at the Bulls, what would you say their play style is? Iso ball. That is not a play style. That's not a play style. We need a true play style. We need a, a defensive identity. We need hell an offensive identity. We need a player that is a vocal leader on this team, and we don't fucking have that. Those are the cultural things that we're missing with this team that could help take us to new heights and new levels, and we're probably not going to see. We got one game left. The Bulls, in all reality, are probably going to play five more games, and that's it because it may be a first-round sweep. This offseason, this team needs to look to identify that. And I've said it before, Billy Donovan is not going to be fired, I don't think, with two years left on his deal in which they would have to pay, the, pay him still if they fire him. I think they're going to give him another season to run it back. And if that, if next season ends like this one, Billy Donovan's gone for sure. And people ask this, and, I, and I'm glad that I could talk about this publicly. I think I left this in the comment, but I didn't talk about it publicly. Anyone who's asking, who are the Bulls going to replace Billy Donovan with? This is what I'm going to respond to you. We don't need another big name. The Mark Jackson conversations need to stop. That's not who we fucking need here. If the Bulls are going to truly change the culture and identify, look at, for example, I've always compared it to this. Before Eric Spolstra became the head coach of the Miami Heat, nobody outside of that organization knew who the hell he was. Nobody knew who he was. As, part of my, as far as the national media and, and mainstream basketball fans. But he was able to come up through that, that organization, get to the point of being a head coach, and now he's looked at as one of the best head coaches in the league. We don't need, we made the splash signing and bringing in Billy Donovan. We need somebody who's going to come in here and completely, who knows the organization, who, who can grow here with the players and with the team and may have a chance to, to grow into a coach that we don't see. So anybody who's asking, well, who are you going to replace Billy Donovan with? It doesn't need to be a big name. It doesn't need to be. I know that that's the flashy thing to do, especially because people keep talking about this three-year window and they want to see us be a championship contender right fucking away. It's not always about making the splash or getting the big coach head signing. It's about finding the right man for the job, going through a long interview process, understanding what a coach, a potential coach's vision for this team is, a play style that they want to make with the players that we have here. What is their vision? That's what I want to see AK and Eversley do. I want to see them bring in and build the next big name head coach rather than go after the next big big name head coach. I know everybody's not going to agree with me on that, but let me know down below. What do you think about that? When it comes time for the Bulls to replace Billy Donovan, would you rather see them go after a flashy name or would you rather do, have them have an extensive search in which they find somebody who may not have the biggest cachet right now, but brings the basketball IQ and knowledge and game plan that then you can trust in that's going to develop over time to get this team to the heights that they can get into. And I think that's the perfect place to end this video on. Let me know what you guys think about all that last part down below, the whole video down below. Make sure you're also following the podcast at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullcentralpod at gmail.com. Also, if you want to leave a text or a voicemail, the number to do that is 773-270-2799. I love you guys more than I can ever put into words. It really does mean the most to me of how we've grown over the course, yes, the growth has slowed down as the Bulls' wins have slowed down, which is to be expected. But still, within less than a year, to grow this channel to almost 6,000 subscribers, I can't say enough what that means to me, man. I appreciate you guys. 
Bulls Nation, see red, don't be red, man. As we continue to grow, I hope to see you guys also at the Crisis Hotline this afternoon. Go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Breaks Breaks Media. Media.